I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Missile Dan Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect 2 video. We are cruising through the Overlord DLC, Overlord, and this is the very last episode of said DLC. Again, like I said in the previous episode, uh, a disclaimer, this is a highly controversial DLC and for very good reason. And uh, you can check out some links that I've put in below to uh, resources uh, to learn a little bit more about autism and how that affects uh, folks who have it. I also want to give a huge shout out to those of you watching the premieres of these videos and an even bigger shout out to those of you supporting the channel over on patreon.com slash missile online without you guys I would not be able to do these and don't forget to leave a like and a comment so that hopefully these videos get boosted into the algorithm so at some point we can get lots and lots of people to view them because they are indeed the best most complete 100% playthroughs of Mass Effect Legendary Edition on the entirety of the YouTubes. I, I made up that statistic, but, but let's hope that it's true. Anyways, we are going to start with the very final mission that we can today, and that is the Atlas Station of the Overlord DLC. So, we are going to pick a party of Miranda, and I recommend this no matter what. We are going to be doing a lot of fighting as just Shepard, and her Cerberus Leader ability that uh, gives weapon damage and health and stuff still applies to him even though she's not fighting with him. So I highly recommend, no matter what, to bring Miranda with you on this mission. And because of the things that we've been experiencing this entire time, I would recommend Tally. However, for this particular mission, I would bring Morden. Just because this is probably the most we would want Morden to kind of weigh in about what Cerberus is doing and what the Overlord Project is doing, because this, my friends, is kind of a big deal. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. Now, I would also recommend uh, putting what, whatever points you can. Uh, we can max out our cryo ammo, which I believe we actually did at the end of the last episode. We're going to go with squad cryo ammo so we can get a ton of CC from that. Uh, and we're going to wait just a little bit because I want that neural shock maxed out. Same with Miranda's Overload. Uh, then we are going to make sure that we have the Arc Projector. You can bring the Arc Projector or the Cane. The Cane has a kind of neat thing that you can do, uh, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to bring the Arc Projector instead for this mission. The other person that I would recommend bringing on this mission, and in fact, most missions, whenever you're dealing with synthetics, is actually Zaid, who has disruptor ammo. Also, immediately arriving here, noticing that, well, just like every other station on Aita here, or however you pronounce this planet name, everybody is, well, deader than a than a doornail. They're, they're all pretty dead. So, let's go ahead and, oh, we didn't have to bypass that door at all. It would seem that David wants us to come in. We're gonna go ahead and investigate. as well as a whole host of other issues. Let's go ahead and examine this door here, which is immediately going to become green for us, meaning that David 
is allowing us in here. David wants to show us what happened in this facility. He locked this door, but we're going to go ahead and open that. Which, open that one instead. Oh, but I want to go in there. There might be... I okay, fine. If you try to open that one, he'll open this one. So we'll proceed through. This actually has a really cool moment in it, too, on an elevator that you're going to be seeing. That is just really, really neat. So we'll go ahead and take that out real quick. Look at all the Geth that have been destroyed. Again, remember, in the Overlord DLC, the Geth are not attacking these stations. The Geth were already here. They were being studied on. They were inactive. The VI took them over and made them active. Obviously, we only have one room to go to. David corralling us and telling us where to go. Grabbing this med kit here for 100 credits, because remember, we do not use metagels in this game. We'll go ahead and salvage this as well for 1,500 credits. Again, all of those credits are going to uh, really help. We're actually going to be doing a shopping trip at the in this episode, because, my friends, we're going to be loaded with the moolah. And this is the part, we're getting near the part where I was telling you about. It, it reminds me of a Tower of Terror at the uh, at Disney. It's, it's actually a pretty terrifying part. Level two seeing these geth bodies laying all over the place we can also go ahead and there is a decomposition simulation let's go ahead and... oh well that's strange looks like there's a secure computer up here level three access required let's see if we can access this now, the thing about this elevator, because it's been damaged, it can only move a certain amount of floors at a time. So what you want to do is, oh, an easy way to do it, is that you actually set it to an odd number, like three or five, by using the computers that you can do here. And then you actually just go ahead and summon it here. So it'll go five, and then finally, it'll arrive on our floor, level seven. And as soon as the elevator starts arriving, we're going to go ahead and switch to our arc projector here because as we get ready, we're going to charge it and immediately a Geth Prime and two Geth Troopers are going to be in the elevator here. We're going to go ahead, do that, charge them, switch to our Geth Plasma Shotgun that we can hopefully take these out before too much damage is done. Of course, we can charge this Geth Prime and keep loading into it and charge once again we should be totally fine the geth prime once it's off and its shields are gone we could just take it out and we'll go ahead and overload it there we go geth prime down so the arc projector is very useful if you charge it up as the elevator is getting ready to open and then we can finally head inside the music there was still going anyway so this is the part that i was telling you about that gets a little freaky deaky so let's go ahead and uh let's use this elevator here Could you imagine that happening? Anyways, we'll come in here and they immediately kill a, a, a geth that I guess was activating. Man. Finding out that the guy were happening, Gavin Archer, his own brother here, just because he's got an alien mind because of autism? Again, there's a there's a very good reason why this is such a highly controversial DLC. Hacking this computer, though, will get 2,250 credits. Again, that's going to make our shopping trip after this very, very nice. We'll go ahead and grab this refined palladium as well, checking around to make sure we didn't miss anything else that was in the room. And it's so easy to because of the little tiny computers that you can find here. Like these little things, you know, occasionally we'll have something. We can scan... That geth for another heavy skin weave upgrade, which will be very useful. Making sure that we're as full on ammo as we can get. So seeing that this door has some little VI tricks going on there. Let's go ahead and open that. Uh, looks like we're not going to be able to open that. 
things start to get a little trippy here if you are uh, a human, not a VI. Anyways, we have a VI server console here, and this, my friends, is when we are going to go solo. So let's go ahead and interact with the VI server console. Get ready. Don't be surprised if this button summons a Reaper. And I would recommend saving before interacting with that console, just in case, you know, you end up on your own with your with your Omni tool hacked. It's fine, though. Anyways, they are locked in there, and this is the part I was telling you about. But we are actually still benefiting from Miranda's Cerberus Leader ability. And this, my friends, is just such a cool part of the game. I absolutely love it. We are hacked. David, now... We can understand the VI. We, 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 we know what's happening. We can hear David himself. We're going to go ahead and take down these Geth. Watching out for up. And these are actually not real Geth, believe it or not. At least that's what's implied here. They seem to be constructs that only exist in this area. As you can see, they don't shatter into bodies when you defeat them. They disappear as if they are entirely data, which is very likely considering we can actually see outlines of corpses on the ground of at least humans, which means uh, that, yeah, they're, they're get, these Geth probably don't actually exist. They're, they're programs. Not that, you know, physically. All Geth, I guess, are programs, but... David apparently able to understand Geth. Now, this is actually a thing you can't really break through here. Um, you, oh, well, I lied to you. I guess you can't actually break through there. We'll go ahead and kill these. We're going to be heading that way shortly, but we'll go ahead and take out as much as we can here before we proceed further. We're going to be just a little bit careful here because our health got real low there. There's one more Geth troop. There he is. <laughs> I was like, where is he? Anyways, uh, there are some power cells here that we're going to grab. And that actually is going to give us... That's not going to give us the 100 credits that we want it to give us. Now, this is broken, but we can't actually go into that room. Um, I just think that's very interesting. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to examine this disturbance first. David, can you repeat my notes from Thursday's experiment? Square root of 918.09 is 30.3. David, please pay attention. Loud. It's getting loud in here. I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. Would you mind repeating my notes from Thursday's experiment? Log 137.3. The experiment yielded no discernible patterns of geth obedience. End dictation now, David. Hell, the elusive man will have my head for this. Thank you. <laughs> Square root of 9 up to 24.16 and 30.4. Earplugs would be good. I think it's very interesting how often David mentions it being too loud, needing earplugs, and yet that VI screams. Over here, we can grab some palladium, 500 palladium, and another disturbance that we can interact with. David, I want you to order the Geth to take a step forward. Savant. 
His autistic mind can interpret the Geth language at its most basic form and mimic their phonetics. With his photographic memory, cross-referencing the meaning as a snap. He's literally a human computer. And you think he can interface with the Geth's neural network? I do. Is that even safe, Doctor? I see no harm in finding out. There are so many things that can be talked about uh, in the way that they handle things in this particular DLC. We're going to go ahead and hop over this wall now that we've taken care of those and grab this med kit here. And also this wall safe that we can access for 22, uh, 2250 credits. We did blow up this hub, which uh, did allow us to take down the three geth that were in here. And it doesn't, I mean, it's not a big deal. It was just three geth. We have a shotgun. We're fine. David apparently actually wants our help. Wants us to, to make this stop. And that, my friends, is exactly what we're going to do. We actually have a VI connection here that we're going to shoot that will absolutely break that in one shot. Now, you could also use uh, anything that would that would one-shot that sniper rifle. It doesn't matter. You can also just use an SMG to take it down. Proceeding into the next room here, we want to keep our eye out for any credits or anything that we can get. Coming up here into this room, we can find more ammo that is probably, inevitably, going to be useful. You can actually see how large this room is. And it's kind of hard to tell what's around. We can grab this salvage here for 1,500 credits. And we're going to wait just a second on those elevator controls as we scour the room, making sure that we have received everything, including the refined palladium, another 500. These power cells for one more heavy weapon ammo. I would have rathered 100 credits, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, and uh, that is going to be everything that we can find in this room. So we're going to go ahead and activate this controller. I don't believe there's anything hidden back here, but... So we're going to go ahead and activate this uh, this elevator controls so that we can call the next thing so that we can go where we need to go. And unfortunately, we're being told that this uh, elevator is a little bit too heavy. So we're going to go ahead and wait just a second because as it opens, my friends, we are yet again going to be dealing with more geth. So we're going to be dealing with a hunter and two rocket troopers. We're going to go ahead and pop those and we'll be able to take this out. No problem with that arc projector. Super, super helpful. We'll switch to this and we'll take down that geth hunter just like that. And then we'll go ahead and activate these controls getting near the end here of the Overlord DLC, which is actually kind of neat. David in the center of the room there appears to be trying to upload to the Normandy. Now we'll actually see that their VI core is here and we want to put as much damage as possible into this. And we'll actually see that these neuro uh, things will be uploading to the Normandy. At least David is trying to. David showing us his memories as he proceeds. Now, you actually want to be in this position here because from here, we can actually get all of the nodes that spawn from this location, which is incredibly, incredibly useful. Geth will also spawn here, but you want to be on this pillar because it's going to essentially avoid most things. Now, unfortunately, we are out of the uh, Matic rifle. There is ammo right there, but we're going to wait just a second. And we'll go ahead and finish off these VI connections for the very final one. You'll see that Geth are starting to come in now. We don't really need to worry about them because of our positioning here. We can actually finish this off very, very quickly. This is the last uh, VI connection that we need. We're going to go ahead and sprint around here so that we can hopefully finish this one off. Missing it by just a second. Getting ready to take down the VI core. As long as that armor goes, that will be the end. You actually don't need to deal with any of the Geth as you proceed. Wait! 
Commander! I'm begging you. Don't do anything rash. In case you thought that it couldn't get any worse, look what this man did to his own brother. I get the pursuit of wanting to crush any geth without, you know, everyone dying to a geth war. But that? Man. Rash? Like forcing your own brother into an experiment? I know how this must look, but I never intended any harm to come to him. You must believe me. It's not like I planned this. It was an accident. Seeing David communicate with the geth, it all seemed harmless. It all seemed harmless. I saw his memory. He begged you not to do this. I was desperate. The elusive man doesn't broker failure. Any war we fight with the Geth will be bloody. I was asked to find a way to avoid that. And how many have already died for this project? More souls than will ever forgive me. But I won't apologize for radical ideas. If my work spares a million mothers mourning the loss of a million sons, my conscience will rest easy. Look at him. Your brother would never be the same. The damage may not be permanent. He might recover some semblance of his mind. Cerberus will never leave him alone. Your brother will always be a lab rat. Better well cared for, lab rat. At least he'd still be alive. So you'll sacrifice your brother's happiness for your own ambition. Square root of 906.01 equals... 30.1 What I've done to David is unethical. If he dies, it's unforgivable. Let me take care of him. Please. Quiet. Please, make it stop. And we have a choice here that does have some repercussions for Mass Effect 3. We can actually decide that Cerberus in this Project Overlord needs him and Gavin can continue his research on David and potentially finding a way to stop the Geth that way. Or uh, we can say David is coming with us, and I just don't see a, a reason ever to allow this type of thing to continue. So David is coming with us for sure. I've seen enough of your cruelty to know he'll never be free from it here. I'm taking him away. No, leave him! He's too valuable! <laughs> You even think about coming after your brother and this bullet will be waiting for you. Then we'll see who's valuable. Where will you take him? Grissom Academy. They can help special cases like David. Minus the torture. Joker, contact the Academy and let them know we've got someone who needs their help. Aye, aye, Commander. The elusive man can fire me if he doesn't like it. Square room. 12.04 is 30.2. It all seemed harmless. Square root of 912.04 is 30.2. It all seemed harmless. Square root of 912.04 is 30.2. It all seemed harmless. <laughs> And we will get the Digital Exorcist Trophy. The rogue VI was successfully shut down, but the test subject was taken to a non-Cerberus facility for care. Good. Cerberus has shown that they are criminals, and Shepard is done with Cerberus. That is for sure. While this is a considerable setback for Cerberus, Dr. Archer's research will be instrumental in devising a safer approach to controlling the Geth. Unfortunately, probably not. 312 experience gained from that. We got the Heavy Skin Weave upgrade, uh, 1,500 credits, and 2,000 Palladium. That is everything that we could get there. Uh, and it's it's those final words from David that, that are really haunting. He heard his brother just say that, and that's what's stuck in his in his mind. Uh, and that's that's what haunts him. Is It all seemed harmless. He can't help but 
that is what is what his father chose or his brother chose. Uh, there is the option of leaving David with Dr. Archer and the commander will punch the doctor and tell him that the only reason he gets to survive is because that research may prevent war with the Geth. And that Paragon interrupt that we actually got there, it's a fast one. And I think it's very interesting that in this mission, you, no matter what you are, you are probably going to hit or put a gun in, in David's, uh, in uh, uh, Gavin Archer's face. Uh, and I think it's amazing that for a Paragon interrupt, we pistol whip him uh, to show just how awful Archer is. And yes, maybe it'll do it. But you know, you know who I put at fault for all of this, no matter what? The elusive man. Regardless of anything, the elusive man is the one that got, kind of set these things in motion. And I and I think that that should be considered when we look at the Overlord DLC or the story of the Overlord DLC. And we got that heavy skin weave. Let's go ahead and see what message we have from this. We have a Pragya facility update. Contacting you per elusive man's instructions, he believed you would want to know uh, that he had ordered Subject Zero's project shut down before the riot broke out. I'm sure he did. Cerberus personnel arrived to find all guards dead along with most of the subjects. Any surviving children were treated for injuries, given mild amnesic uh, treatments, and delivered to Alliance facilities as survivors of slaver attacks. A few surviving doctors were forcibly retired for their role in the project. Per your report, the facility on Pragya has been destroyed. That, of course, being from Jack's loyalty mission. Update on the kid from, uh, we actually already received this one, if I'm not mistaken. And we have this one from the Elusive Man as well. I understand you've taken Dr. Archer's brother to Grism Academy. I'm familiar with their work. It should be a good home for him. I don't condone Dr. Archer's actions. Yeah, right. But they did provide a breakthrough we've been sorely lacking thus far. We'll likely never find another individual with David's unique talents, though your decision is understandable as set our efforts to understand the Geth back several years. Well, unfortunately, I mean, that's real too bad, but uh, there's a Reaper invasion that will be here in less than several years, so it it's inconsequential, in fact, what that research will provide or not provide. Mommy. Also worth mentioning that only Tally right now has a loyalty mission. We are going to go and research this heavy skin weave that we just picked up. That will put us, uh, hopefully, maxing us out. Gets 40% 40 per, 40 health. Actually, it didn't max us out. I lied to you. That was that was our 4 out of 5. So we have one more heavy skin weave that we can get. And that, my friends, is actually exactly what we're going to do. We are going to head to some places to do some shopping real quick. It's also worth mentioning, if we look at our journal, we will see Atlas Station. The Rogue VI has been shut down. David Archer has been taken to Grism Academy. is no longer in danger from Cerberus technology. Joker has nothing to say, so it's shopping time. And I think one of the only places that we have a lot of things to buy is actually on Elium. And with that, that means that the Typhon system is 100% and the Phoenix Massing Cluster is also 100% completed. Finally, heading to Elium with a sizable amount of credits, uh, 170,000, and I'm hoping that that's enough to buy all of the upgrades that we need to from Elium, but who knows with this game, we'll find out. And our first stop is going to be at Ceres Technology, where there is biotic damage, bypass module, tech damage, metagel capacity, which I don't recommend you getting, uh, and the Kestrel helmet, which uh, is great. It's actually the best helmet you can have for a Vanguard, but I just... Listen, I think it looks terrible, and I don't want to see it in cutscenes. Now, heading over to the other shop that we can go to down in the transit station, the Gateway Personal Defense Area. This is the stuff that I would recommend getting more, uh, and the assault rifle damage being our number one priority, as well as the machine gun, the submachine gun damage. Obviously, we need those because that's going to just make things a lot better for us. And we could check the memories here just to go ahead and grab that paddlefish, as well as the another Kodiak shuttle ship. Uh, that we can grab from Helium. I don't know if I would recommend grabbing everything else, but we do know that we have pretty much everything on Tuchanka, and we have pretty much, we do have everything on the Citadel. So uh, if you have any other things that you wanna buy, feel free. It is worth mentioning the credits that we have now is pretty much the credits that we have for the rest of the game. We're not going to receive too many more credits, uh, and anything that we do is going to just basically be cleanup for us, because again, this is 100% playthrough. I want to buy everything from the shop, but because credits are a very finite thing, and the DLC from the Legendary Edition, instead of just getting it, you now have to buy it, uh, makes it a little difficult to do that. So we aren't able actually to afford the tech damage or the biotic damage anymore from this shop. I don't recommend the bypass module at all. It's just a waste of money, personally. Uh, the metagel capacity, I also don't recommend because we just don't use it. And the Kestrel, the Kestrel helmet, I mean, we could pick it up just to have it. Uh, puts us behind 6,000 credits, but that's fine. 
And just for the sake of completion, on Tuchanka, we can pick up the asymmetric defense layer, which we're not going to be using, and the shield harness. There we go. And that is every shop on Tuchanka completely cleared out. So as of right now, the only shop that we have anything left in is just that one on Helium, the Saris one. And now that all of our shopping is done, my friends, we are pretty much... That's it for the extra content that we can do in this game, all the side quests and everything, at least until after we complete the main story of this game. The Reaper IFF, the that the Stop the Collectors, the story mission that we have, is going to be the very next episode. And you might be wondering, well, what about the N7 archaeological dig site? We are not going to be doing these N7 missions until after we've completed the game. Now, if you don't care about getting all of the dialogue for all of the characters, and that's not something that you're looking forward to, and you just you just don't care. I would recommend doing these now so that you have all of those resources going into the final mission because you're going to need them. The final mission is very tough. However, I want to get all the dialogue. I want to show all the dialogue completionist run through. We're going to get it no matter what. I don't care when we get it as long as we get it all. So uh, we're going to be waiting. We're going to be doing this post game after we are done with the main story as well as the arrival DLC because that is frankly when it makes the most sense. I actually don't recommend doing it before that at all. It makes the most sense. To me, that is the post game. That is the story that you need going into Mass Effect 3. Uh, we also have Tally's loyalty mission, which will be done after we stop the collectors and, and get this Reaper IFF, uh, as well as another Ooh. character that will finally be joining our squad. Because as you know, my friends, we have had a blank spot between Zaid and Samara for a very long time. And I'm very excited to get that character and show you everybody but Tally is loyal. And we are done with the Overlord DLC. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I sincerely appreciate you. A huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres of these episodes. And even bigger shout out to those of you supporting the channel over on patreon.com slash online, And those of you hanging out on Twitch and leaving comments and likes on these videos. It really does help out and it pushes us into the algorithm. So thank you so much. I love you and never give up. Never surrender to the Bioware's controversial DLC. Bye, everyone.